Today marks the 14th year since the horrific terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the flight that crashed into Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Now, despite all that the armed forces have done to neutralize the terrorist threat, and we can remain arguing about that as we have, whether or not some of these decisions were correct, al-Qaeda is as awful and as dangerous as it was. Plus, there's a new, more heinous group rising to power in the Middle East. Joining us on the KSR Live Line is a senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies and editor of the Long War Journal, Bill Roggio. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, I My pleasure, because I've admired your writings for a very long time. Uh, let's talk about the threat uh, that remains to America today. How do you see it? Yes, I would argue that 14 years after 9-11, the threat to the United States has grown exponentially. Prior to 9-11, al-Qaeda had a, 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 its primary base was in Afghanistan, and then it operated on a cellular level in several other countries, in, in Saudi Arabia, in Yemen, in, in, in Africa, but it didn't have this massive uh, network where it was conducting insurgencies looking to te- keep or take and control ground. Uh, one of the things that made Afghanistan so dangerous prior to 9-11 is it used Af- as a base to not only fight alongside the Taliban, but to tr- take individuals and train them to conduct attacks against the West and the U.S. That's where the 9-11 attacks emanated from. Today, al-Qaeda has, a base, has bases in Syria, in in, Af- in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Yemen, this is where they're conducting insurgencies and running training camps. In Somalia, in Egypt now, in North Africa, in Mali, I could go on and on about the the growth of the network. And that's and we're not even talking about the Islamic State, which is really just an offshoot of of Al Qaeda. Remember, the Islamic State uh, was part of was Al Qaeda in Iraq until Al Qaeda expelled it in February 2014. Well, that was my question. How do we sort of put all of these al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and ISIS in perspective? Are they all fighting amongst themselves to get attention, or are they working with each other at all? Well, the, the Islamic State uh, had a, and the al-Qaeda had a fallout, and now they're, I would call them rivals, much like the Chinese communists and the Russian communists were rivals during the, the Cold War, um, but never really came to blows. Uh, that, I think that's a similar type situation. Look, they all share the same. They both, all these groups share the same goal. And by the way, the Taliban is really and Al Qaeda. They're more closely allied today than they were prior to 9/11. And the Taliban is retaking areas of Afghanistan, even while U.S. forces are in country. But the, these groups, they all share the same goal. They want to establish a global caliphate. They want to impose Sharia law. The difference between Al Qaeda and the Islamic State now is how do we achieve those goals? Al Qaeda says, "Hey, look, we got to be more inclusive. We got to work with other groups, even if they're not perfect. Um, we got to we'll work with them and we'll change their minds." The Islamic State says it's our way or the highway, and uh, that's the really the big sort of tactical and strategic difference between the two groups. Here's what frightens me half to death. Uh, We got an announcement from the White House yesterday that uh, the United States, President Obama, is going to invite 15,000 Syrian refugees to relocate and settle in America. And as we well know, uh, there are people from ISIS and from uh, al-Qaeda who I'm sure will be among that group. What do we do? Yeah, and look, it's difficult to say if and how the and some types of infiltrations will happen among refugees, but I just generally think it's a bad idea. I mean, you're talking about, you know, countries where there is an active civil war going on in Syria, and we have various radical jihadist groups. Yeah, it, it would be, you know, when you're talking large numbers, and you look at Germany, I mean, they're taking in 800,000 people. How do they vet? that a number of people coming they can't. in to ensure that they're not terrorists. You're absolutely right. They can't. And look, our intelligence apparatus has failed on multiple levels during this war and its assessments pre prior to nine eleven and, and to this day. 
And what makes us think that they can accurately assess who's coming in from Syria when you have radical groups, multiple radical groups operating the way they do? One last question for you, and then I know you're very busy today, but I'm wondering about uh, what is going to happen a little bit later today when people start talking about and examining the the CIA um, analyst report. I guess there are 15 so-called spies who have come out and said, the information, the intel, has been prettied up for the president. What do you think that's all about? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I've actually heard this from individuals at U.S. Central Command myself. Not surprising because these estimates that we've heard uh, from the administration, they just don't match reality. And they're basing it based on what the military is telling them. And I do believe that there is manipulations, manipulation from administration officials and from military officials who want to a show success and b to you know they there's pandering politics at the high levels of military that's whether you're going to have conservative or liberal governments or whatever republican or democrat you're going to get that to some degree and but you know this is an important issue and we can't sit here and say we're winning this war when we're we're not we're losing bill thanks so much for joining us this morning it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Bill Roggio, and uh, you can find him at uh, De- Defense for Democracies. Uh, that is on the web. Uh, it's D- defenseforddemocracies.com.